Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More, it's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to explain how to use voicing lock inside Scalar 2. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. As usual, I'm inside the AUM and I have an audio channel with Scalar as an instance. So let's open Scalar 2. And today we are going to cover voice in lock. But before uh, we do that, let's select select the scales and let's go with the standard C major scale and we'll leave it on the triad configuration, which sounds like this. Perfect. And then let's change that actually to a grand piano. I prefer that one. Okay. So first of all, let's play the triad here. So you see this chord with C2, E, and G here for the triads in the, the C major scale. Okay, let's activate voice in lock here and let's uh, scroll open up the menu and select the dynamic. So voice in lock allows you to uh, group no notes around voice scale ranges to enable for a smoother transition, transition between chords, okay? So let's play now the C major chord. As you can see, what has happened is that the C2, which is the root of that chord, has gone um, lower of an octave. And then what has happened is that the scalar 2 has selected the right uh, or the most convenient inversion for that tri uh, triad. So in this case, you have a G here and a C3 and a E here. Now, if you have a seventh or a ninth, let's see what happens. You see the seven, which is uh, up here. Okay, so it is an octave above. Now, as I move through the scale, you will find that when the distance to the tonal voice is too great, then it will move that seventh lower an octave. So let's try like in this case, G7. So it has moved that F lower instead of going above because the distance to the tonal voice is too great. Okay, the next modes are the dynamic one octave above. So let's go back to try it. Okay, just an octave above. The next one will be two octaves above. Very simple, right? Next, we have grouping C1 to B2, which means we respect the range of C1 here to B2, which will be here, okay? And it will not go over, of course, that B2. And it's quite nice. You can still apply voicing, of course, but it will keep it within that range. Voicing 2. Okay, and so on. So it's quite straightforward. Similar, you have grouping C2 to B3. So from C2 here up to B3 here, okay? Quite a nice range. Again, works in a similar way. It just constrain within that range, the voicing. Let's apply some voicing four here. You see this one which went up to a B3, yeah, but it will not exceed that. Next, we have C3 to B4. Again, same concept, same concept. so from uh, C3 here to uh, B4 up to the scale here. Let's change also the visual here. We go smaller so you can see a better range. Again, it will not go above that B4, okay? So next we have open voicing. So open voicing. So uh, in, if you remember the configuration of a G major, you see that uh, now the chord is in open voicing configuration. Compared to not having voicing lock active. To voicing lock active. You see, it has moved that E up an octave and also duplicated 
the C2 to C3, so it is in open voicing position. Okay, next we have the open voicing one octave above. Quite straightforward. The next one is guitar voicing, which is maximizing the range for the guitar neck. Okay, so let's choose, for example, uh, guitar, acoustic guitar. So this is great if you have a guitar and you want to ensure that the chords uh, are contained within that uh, range of the guitar neck. Really nice. Next, we have a drop two voicing. So to understand this, you need to understand about dropping of uh, voicing so if you have a triad uh, so let's actually move uh, to a different view let's um, open that up a little more a le little bit more let's uh, disable for now voicing lock let's go for a triad here so you can see how that triad works c2 e and g okay and let's activate voicing lock but we have a uh, drop to voicing okay so what has happened? He starts from the top. The first is a G, the second is an E, so he has dropped that by an octave, so it is here. Nice and simple. And the similar you can do with drop the third voicing, okay? Which in this case would be the C2, which is drop to C1. Okay, the next one will be drop four voicing. In this case, nothing happens because you have only three voices here. But if I was to go for a seventh, you will find that the C2 drops to C1 because you have the first on the B, second on the G, third on the E, and the fourth is a C2, which drops to C1. Okay? And the last one is actually drop the second and the third voicing. So the second is an E, and the third is a C2, starting from the top of the triad, so those are dropped by an octave. Okay, and that is uh, how voicing lock works, which becomes very useful, of course, when you are actually creating those chord progression. Okay, I'm going to stop here for this short tutorial, and as always, see you next time. Bye.